Welcome back to our series on multilingual practices. I'm Rachel Strong from the University of Maryland Center for Advanced Study of Language, or CASEL. And I'm Michelle Morrison, also from CASEL. In the previous segment, we talked about context and contextualization cues. Contextualization cues are strategies that speakers use to clue listeners in to which bits of context are most relevant to the matter at hand. We showed you how speakers use contextualization cues in English conversations. Then we talked about a special kind of contextualization cue in which speakers use words from different languages in the same conversation. With the Tarje example, we showed that speakers don't necessarily have to speak the other language very well, or even speak it at all, in order to use words from that language as a contextualization cue. We often call these kinds of multilingual contextualization cues code switching or just switching. The word switching reminds us that contextualization cues work because they're a little unusual and surprising. They alert the listener that there's something going on here and then point them to the context that will let them infer information beyond the literal meaning of the text. Like other kinds of contextualization cues, speakers may use switching to do a number of different things, including convey their attitudes toward what's being talked about, negotiate with other speakers about who's in charge of the narrative, or organize the flow of information and topics. In order to identify switching and its function, we use a method called conversation analysis. Conversation analysis involves very detailed study of transcripts of actual conversations to understand their structure and flow. Let's listen to an example of switching from conversations we recorded among native speakers of Somali with some command of English and Arabic. We have changed the speakers' names. In this excerpt, our speakers are discussing bank fees. There's a standard $5 charge. In addition to conversion, Did you notice the repetition of the phrase every time? Let's look more closely at this conversation. The first time the phrase every time shows up is in line two. Mariam is asking in Arabic for more information. In line four, Burhan answers the question in English every time. Mariam repeats her question in Arabic seeking confirmation in line five. And finally, Burhan responds with the same phrase every time here in Arabic as well. So what's going on here? The fact that Maryam asked her question in Arabic in line two may not be particularly meaningful. Burhan started the story in Arabic, so perhaps Maryam thinks that's the most appropriate language for now. But in line five, when Maryam asked the question in Arabic again, the juxtaposition of languages does seem to be meaningful. Maryam is highlighting the contrast between English and Arabic. It's as if she's saying, I can't believe what you're telling me. Tell me in Arabic to make sure I understand. In other words, she's framing the confirmation question as a translation to convey her surprise and outrage over the heavy fees. She's using the contrast between the languages to convey her attitude about what's being talked about. Additionally, in line one, Burhan uses English to set off the bank teller's statement, there's a standard $5 charge as a quote. Research on multilingual groups has not found switching while quoting someone to reliably reproduce the original language, but it probably does so in this example. Let's take a look at another example. This time, our speakers are discussing the color of an iPod. Silver? Silver? That was a lot of debate over the color of an iPod and a lot of different languages. Let's look at this conversation a little closer. Yusuf is certain that the iPod in question was silver, repeating the phrase, yes, it was silver, mixing Arabic, Somali, and English in lines one and five, and partially again in line seven. Both Ayan and Burhan are skeptical about the color of the iPod or the color of its case. And in line eight, Ayan cuts off Yusuf, switching into English to clarify that it was silver back. When Ayan switches in line eight, she uses the juxtaposition between languages to jolt the conversation away from a debate that seems to be going nowhere and back to the main thread of the narrative. Ayan uses contrast between languages to assert her authority and close off an irrelevant subtopic. To sum up, in this segment we examine the ways that multilingual speakers can contextualize their speech by switching in order to convey their attitudes toward what's being talked about and to negotiate with other speakers about who's in charge of the narrative. Paying attention to switching can help you to make rational inferences about the social characteristics of a group and to explicitly ground your inferences in language behavior. In our next segment, we'll talk about a third way that multilingual speakers can contextualize their speech by switching to organize the flow of information and topics.
Thank you for watching. Again, I am Rachel Strong. And I'm Michelle Morrison. See you next time.